Guys, this watch is looking really, really lovely. It's the Seiko Seahorse. It was made in July 1965. And in this video, you're going to see me do a full assembly of this watch, having put it through the ultrasonic cleaner. Now, it's the second in a two-part series on this watch. In the first video, and you can see that by clicking on the card right there, you can watch me do a full teardown, uh, disassembly of this watch. But in this video, I'm going to reassemble the watch to its former glory that you can see right here. And oh, that is so lovely. At the end of the video, as I say, um, get some really nice close-ups of this watch. But this is a slow and careful reassembly of this watch and a regulation of it. So let's get on with it. So the oils in your skin can actually have an adverse effect on the metal uh, of the different parts of the watch. So before you start any reassembly, once you've cleaned all the pieces, and there you can see all the pieces on the bench um, having come out of the ultrasonic cleaner, nicely cleaned, um, so that we don't tarnish them, it's best to put on, if I just get that in focus, some finger cots, uh, you can see that I actually, finger cots are normally longer than this. I've cut mine down because I don't like them long and I don't like the way they kind of pinch my fingers. Um, and, you know, one of my major aims is to be comfortable in just about everything I do. So, um, yeah, but you're going to need some finger cots on like this before you start the reassembly. So we have cleaned the barrel and put a little bit of grease on it. Um, the grease we're using is this. Okay, this is nice Mobius grease um, made particularly for this purpose. Um, and what we're going to do is place a new spring inside that. Uh, when you do this, clearly a couple of things to bear in mind. Make sure that you get the orientation right. Okay, if I was to put the spring in uh, in this way round, uh, that would actually be wrong. Uh, and the spring would be winding in the wrong way. So it's actually going to go in from this direction into the barrel. And uh, the other thing is to be very careful when you do it. Um, you're going to place the barrel down, uh, place the spring in its little uh, retaining ring over the top of the barrel and sharply push it in. I'm not going to video with that. Um, you get one shot at this, and if you miss it, the spring goes everywhere. Um, so I'm just going to do that now. Um, it's common sense when you do it. You just need to be careful. Uh, and But it's kind of tricky to film. Maybe I'll do that one day. Um, but yeah, I'm going to pop the spring in now, and I'll show the spring when it's in. And there is the new spring inside. The lightly greased barrel. Okay, so the next thing we do is uh, pop the... Uh, the arbor inside that and then pop the lid on the barrel and then the spring is ready to insert into the movement. So we always do that before we start the reassembly of the movement. So I'm going to do that now. And there is the barrel with the spring in, the arbor in and the lid on. But you can see actually the lid is just very slightly skew whiff. Um, you can see that it's just raised slightly here. And you need to make sure that when it's on, that that's not the case, that it is fully flat. You can see that it's down on this side and up on this side. So I'm just going to sort that out and then lay it to one side, ready for inserting into the movement. Okay, I've done that now. Just used a pair of uh, tweezers to push against, um, sort of enclose the case and push against the raised edged and uh, you, as you can see now that has clamped that down and that's ready for inserting into the movement. 
So for cleaning the balance, we left it attached or rather we reattached it to the main plate. So the first thing we've got to do before doing the reassembly is to take it off again and put it somewhere safe. We just have a quick look, make sure it looks like it's working all right. Okay, so look here. Yeah. I mean, that looks nice, right? So um, we're just going to uh, remove that now. And uh, I, I always place it on a little bit of foam like this with a hole in the middle um, and then protect it uh, until I need to put it back on the movement. Okay, just change the camera angle so I can get in with my loop and see what's going on a little easier. And Okay. Take the screw right the way up, come in with your tweezers and remove the screw, put that to one side and then what we're going to do is remove the balance like so. It's easier when the rest of the movement isn't in, and then just gently place the balance on there like that and put it to one side. You can flip it over on its back if it's going to be for any length of time. Um, and there, yeah, that's that That's that bit done. Right, so we're now back to a um, bare base plate and we can start the reassembly of the watch popper. So, going to do that. Okay, so the first thing that's going to go in is the center wheel. Um, you need to check that once the wheels come out of cleaning there's no fluff or anything like that on them and if there is use a little bit of Rodico to to remove it and do it with the loop. Um, this is quite a slow moving wheel so we're just going to put a little bit of this grease um, on the center jewel just a tiny amount there okay and then just place the wheel on it okay like so. Now, of course, this is held in by the cannon pinion on the other side. Just make sure it can move freely, which it can. Uh, so we're going to have to uh, flip the movement over um, whilst holding that wheel on and pop the cannon pinion on. So just going to do that now. Okay, so that is the cannon pinion back on. You can see it there. It is a friction fit, so you just need to kind of hold the wheel on um, with one of the fingers of your left hand, how I do it, and then just gently uh, push it back on with a pair of tweezers, and you'll hear it click. Um, and then just check that when you turn that center wheel that the cannon pinion turns. It's a friction fit. You shouldn't put any... Um, lubricant between it and the cannon pinion because you want it to you know to bind so the next thing that we're going to do actually while we've got the movement still in this uh, really disassembled state is we're going to disassemble uh, the end stone here you know we want a nice high amplitude so we want to make sure these key parts of the movement are really as clean and well lubricated as possible so there's a bit of a technique to this. Uh, I use a one of these cotton buds, um, and you can see. Let's just put that close to it. You can see that I've cut down the size of the cotton bud so that it'll just fit in between uh, the brass clip that holds that end stone down, and then I place it in between it and, and rotate it. Please don't use anything metal to take off these brass clips because they're really soft actually and you'll make a right mess of them. So I find this is quite a good way to do it. Like everything, you need to do it slowly and carefully because these little clips are under tension um, because they are providing the dire shock, uh, shock anti, you know, anti-shock mechanism uh, for the uh, pivots that they're protecting. Uh, so if you do it carelessly, or even sometimes when you do it carefully, they can spring out and it's tiny. And if that springs out, you probably won't find it. 
Um, so it's actually also useful to have a bunch of spares. But better to get it right first time. Do it with something plastic. Uh, I form my own little tool like this and uh, and take it steady. I'm actually not going to film the uh, uh, taking this out, but I will film the cleaning of it and uh, show you when it's back in. Okay, there is the end stone and the dire shock stone jewel rather in uh, some cleaning solution. I don't tend to put the clip in because it makes it more difficult to uh, re um, align when you're putting the movement back together. The key thing here is that we get the jewels nice and clean. So you can come in um, with a blower and just agitate them uh, to get any muck off. Uh, a bit like a low tech ultrasonic cleaner. What I'm going to do now is just come in real close and show you these parts up real close. Okay, at this magnification, we've got a pretty shallow depth of field, but you can see the bottom there of the dire shock uh, encased stone uh, jewel. And also, if I move slightly in here, you can see the capstone, and they are in the cleaning fluid. And all you need to do is give them a little bit of agitation to clean off any muck and then reinsert them back into the movement nice and clean. So that's good. Okay, up nice and close. That is the uh, die shock mechanism on this side of the movement back in. You can see the cannon pinion there to the right. Now, if it's the first time you're doing this with these little die shock jewels, um, expect it to take you a very long time. Expect for you to get it wrong um, and to lose bits and pieces. Um, that's all quite normal. Uh, just the more you practice it, uh, the better you're going to get at it and you know eventually it will just become routine business but it's certainly something that you shouldn't ignore doing when you're or you know think oh I just can't go down to that level um, because essentially you know this is a really critical part of the mechanism which is why of course you know the designers have put all that effort into designing this component so you really need to make sure that the component, you know, this complex, reasonably complex part of the component, um, part of the mechanism is properly maintained. Right, on we go. Okay, so we're ready to start putting the powertrain back in. And the uh, thing to do with this is to make sure each of the wheels is completely clean and make sure there's no fluff on it. Um, check out the pivots and also um, you can do a little bit of lubrication on it um, before they go back in. So I'm just going to film this now. In fact, I have got a little bit of fluff on this particular escape wheel. Let's have a look at that. Camera okay, still running, chatting away. Okay, so just giving the wheel a little bit of flow of any rubbish off it. I have lubricated it. So this is the escape wheel. Uh oh, Baka. So you can see now I we've got the center wheel in here. It's actually the second wheel. Um, and we've got the escape wheel here. And the two wheels that are in between those in the powertrain actually rest above the intermediate train bridge on this movement. So the next thing we've got to do is, is put this component back in. So let's just try and do that right now. Okay. Okay, so just coming in now with this bridge. And this is quite useful because it actually holds everything in place while you do the rest of the powertrain. So if you get this right, it should actually help the process along a little. Just trying to nudge it on. Okay, that looks not too bad. Okay. Good. Right, just have to secure that with its screw. Right. 
Okay, so now to put in the next two wheels. So we just need to make sure that those are clean and lubricated and we've done that already. So that should be fine. And dropping the first of those in. Just need to be careful here actually that the uh, that the barrel is going to go in. And So popping these last two wheels in, we've got the fourth wheel there. Okay, that sits in a pivot bottom plate. And then lastly, this one goes right the way through the centre wheel and through the cannon pinion. There's a little washer on it there, you've got to make sure that's in. Okay, and then that is it. That is the train then fully in place. Um, the only thing that I think I'm going to do, um, just redo here, is take out this last one. Okay just to make it slightly easier to get the barrel in. So we're going to pop the barrel in, put a little bit of lubricant on here and pop the barrel in now. So this is a slow moving part. Um, it's not dual, unfortunately, but we'll put a little bit of, a little bit of grease on it. Okay, that is plenty. Then we're just going to pop in the barrel. There. there we go. That sits nicely there. That would have been tricky with this already in place. So we just need to. Yeah. Okay, you can see that we've. Uh, lost that little washer there that's really important so it's going to have to know we're getting this on film but it's going to drag the washer over the hole like that okay you lose something like that and uh, you'll spend the next day trying to figure out why the watch isn't working properly um, so just coming in now with this last wheel okay That's it. There we go. And that is the powertrain nicely in place now. Okay, so we just got to put the plate over the top of that and we are starting to be in business. So you'll notice we've not put in the pallet fork uh, yeah, because of course that stops the escapement and what we're going to have to do in a minute when we put this uh, bridge over the top is nudge in all the pivots and make sure that they um, everything aligns nicely and that the powertrain is moving freely and you can't do that with the pallet fork in place. So that comes in after this next bit. So what I'm going to do now is just plop this or pop it rather than plop it in uh, in place and jiggle it around. Um, uh, to make sure that all the pivots are in place. Now this can take a little bit of a while, so I'm, I'm not actually going to film this process. Um, I'm going to come back to it when I've done that. So there's the top plate back on. The process for doing that is to place it on uh, with the pivots located as close as 
they can to their respective jewels and then to place in the screws one by one just gently um, and very slowly tighten them up all the while jiggling the top plate or the the barrel bridge as it probably is barrel and train bridge in this case um, uh, and until it locates and there's normally a point when it just all falls into place and when it does you'll know it's right because you give a little little bit of a nudge to the mainspring see if I can do that now and the train will just leap into action um, let's just there you go like that okay so I'm just putting the tiniest bit of pressure on the mainspring you can see that the train is just gorgeous, it's lovely and lubricated. So that's what we're looking for at this point. So let's, uh, we're doing well, let's move on. Okay, so I've reassembled the magic lever mechanism as you can see there. Now if you want to know how this operates then uh, you should look at my uh, video where I strip this down because I actually go through there um, on that video how this particular mechanism operates. Now, in the best traditions of Zen, um, I have actually already put in the ratchet wheel and the click. Um, so I've not shown you how to do that. It's quite straightforward. Um, you just have to be a little bit careful with the click spring. And um, I guess you're watching this video because you want to uh, learn how to do this. So every so often I'm not going to show you something so you have to figure it out for yourself because if I show you absolutely everything then as the old Zen master would say you will rapidly lose the ability to figure it out for yourself and a lot of watchmaking is actually figuring out how these mechanical mechanisms work and the better you get at doing that the better you'll be able to attempt movements that you're not familiar with so it's pretty straightforward um, and uh, you should be able to manage it no problem um, we're just going to pop these automatic works back on top of the movement now so as i say the click and the ratchet wheel is now back on I've just put the uh, automatic works, the magic lever back on and you can see now if I just touch the automatic works um, what they're doing is they're putting power onto the spring and because there is no escapement on there that power is going straight back through the train and onto the escape wheel that you can see there. So and it's happening in both directions so it happens in that direction and that direction and that's what we'd expect to see at this time okay so we're actually be able to put power um, onto the spring with the automatic works okay so the next thing we're going to do is put in the motion works we're going to put in the um, minute wheel and the intermediate wheel um, then there is a little cover uh, if you remember that holds those two um, components in place uh, so we'll place that on and uh, then we will go ahead and put in what is the relatively simple um, keyless works so let's do this now then um, we're going to need a little bit of lubricant for the minute wheel. It's slow moving, um, it's uh, but it needs to have a little bit of lubricant so we're just going to place that on. Now when you use lubricant on these parts um, you only need a very very small amount, it doesn't need to be a lot, okay. So we're just going to put a little bit of grease on there, very small amount, and then place this part on there. Okay, and it's just got to knit in, dovetail. There we go, like that. Okay, so same detail as we used to say in the army with the um, 
minute, uh, sorry, the intermediate wheel. There's a little bit of fluff on here. Uh, you need to check all the time, especially when you're greasing stuff up, that you're not introducing any anything hideous onto the movement. And there is actually a little bit of fluff on this. So I'm just removing that now with my tweezers before we, we apply the grease. Because last thing I want to do, having cleaned the movement, is put a load of fluff into it. Okay. So, again, just a small amount here on the sides doesn't need to be very great at all okay so and I might actually just put a little bit on the inside of the wheel as well okay there we go in fact I can just use that to place that on Okay, that's actually too much. Um, it happens, too much lubricant on there. If you get that, then just come in with a little bit of Rodico and take away the excess. So we're just gonna do that. And you wanna swipe across so you don't, try not to take the component back out. Okay, that just cleans off the excess. We don't want too much ever on it. Okay, so we can put now back in place the plate that holds these components in. I just need to orientate that properly. Um, so, to make sure actually it's right way around. Okay, so we can now place over the top the, uh, the plate that holds these components in place. And if I remember rightly, it goes on like this. It's looking. If you're unsure of your memory is not very good and it needs to be very good to get this right all the time um, then it's a really good idea to photograph the just use a phone or something to photograph the orientation of this stuff it makes it so much easier when you're putting it back together um, the and clearly I have I've got the video of the disassembly which is a which is a help um, but if you don't have that make sure you you photograph it. Just very carefully putting those in. They're tiny screws, you need to be really careful because if they go on the floor, you won't see them again. Okay, so coming in here now, don't know whether I'm masking this, but just screwing that down. Okay. Moving the other one in place and screwing it down. Okay. Just like that. Okay, so the next thing that we've got to do now is the keyless works. Keyless works are reasonably straightforward. The first thing that we've got to do is pop in the component that you use to push down and release the stem. Okay, so it's the, uh, I don't actually know what it's called. Um, I must find that out. It is the little post that pushes on the setting lever. Okay, and it goes in here. So let's do that. Okay, I'm just going to take it up. OK, 
Okay. Okay, so the next part that goes in is the little post that we push um, from the the uh, the other side of the movement to release the stem and we need to do that. So I've just put a little bit of um, lubricant on that. I'm just going to pop that in where it lives, which is in there. Okay, and that's pushed from the other side and it pushes up on this next component, which is the setting lever. But before we put that in, we're going to need to put in the um, castle pinion, okay, which is going to sit, oops, which is going to sit inside, bear with, it's going to sit inside there. Okay, so we need then to do a little bit of uh, lubricant on the stem. Okay, a little bit of grease will suffice for this. Okay. And, okay, so now we've got the stem, we can just place the stem, don't have to lift the movement slightly here to get it through, place the stem and you can immediately now see that engage there, which is good. Okay, just see if you can see that, so that's the stem in there. Okay, it's not actually turning the motion works because um, it hasn't got the spring in the keyless works. <coughs> it's not actually turning the um, uh, minute wheel yet via the intermediate wheel because there's no pressure on it from the spring. Uh, so we're going to put that on now. So the next thing that we're going to put on is the setting lever. Uh, this helps to hold the... Um, stem in place. It's pretty obvious normally how it goes on. Okay, there's a little post on it that you need to uh, locate in the right place. Okay, and it's that that is pushed free when you push through from the other side. So, just uh, coming in here. That's it there. Okay, so that's a setting lever in place. Um, mechanism's got a spring that pushes back on that. So it's quite elegant, this movement. Um, we just need now to be a little bit careful that we don't Last part of the keyless works. It's very elegant. This keyless works. There's not many bits in it, um, and there's no tiny little springs, which is nice. So I'm just going to put the last part of this in now. Okay, so just putting this on. And taking the screw.
Okay, we put it in, but you can see that it's not engaging. And that's because the setting lever hasn't found the right part of the stem to go into. So we're just gonna redo it now. Quite often when you do these things, it doesn't go um, in first time, unless you're really used to the movement. So what we've got to do now is just make sure that this component is actually engaged in the right part of the stem. So let's try and do that. Okay, when you put the setting lever in, you want to make sure that it travels with with the stem like that, okay? Um, that's a good first step. Then we're going to place in the spring and it pushes the winding pinion back and forwards, depending on what you're doing. Okay, find the right hole for it. There we are, there I think. That's good. And then we need to close that off with this component here. Hopefully you're getting this on film. Okay. And then just try and line up the holes so that you can put the screw in. Okay, so we've got those keyless works all lined up now and in the right location. So we just tighten the screw down. Quite firm, don't want to strip the thread out or anything, but it needs to be quite firm. Then we can just check the operation of those. As we pull that out, you can see that we can now set the time on the watch, push it in and it disengages the winding pinion. Pull it out, engages the winding pinion, push it in, and it disengages the winding pinion. And, and there is no clutch there to wind the ratchet wheel because we can't manually wind at this caliber. Um, so that is pretty much it now for this side of the watch. We're gonna flip it over now, put in the uh, pallets to form the escapement. Um, and the uh, balance and see if we can get this watch ticking. There we go. Okay, so before we put in the pallet fork, what I like to do is while I've got the pallet fork out is to get up close and grease the pallet stones. Now you need a special type of lubricant to do that. As you can see, I'm using Mobius 9415, which is the specific uh, lubricant for this purpose. It is a little bit expensive, but it is the right one to use. So I commend it to you. Um, I'm not going to film myself doing that. I'm gonna move straight forward to the insertion. I'm not gonna film myself doing that. I'm just gonna move straight forward to the insertion of the pallet fork um, and its retention with the pallet cock and uh, then we're gonna put the balance in and, and see if the watch will go. So right in the center of the frame there, you can see the pivot on the pallet fork coming through the jewel, and that's what you're seeking at this time. And clearly, you know, you need to wiggle it around and make sure that it's seated properly at the bottom as well. Uh, but that's okay, and sake of thoughtfully cut away a section so that we can use the thread. I'm trying to get in focus there to secure that with a screw and the automatic works is cut away so that you've got access to that with the screwdriver. So we're gonna do that now. Okay, and there is the balance going then. 
Um, you can see I've popped out the die shock at the top and the capstone um, uh, because that needs cleaning as well. We did the one at the bottom, but we didn't do the one on the balance cock. So I just need to do that now. That's in the cleaning uh, fluid. Um, so we're going to pop him back in and oil him up, um, which helped give us some nice high amplitude. Hopefully, um, if the spring, the new spring is up to it, uh, we shall see. Okay. Okay, you can see the balance now going uh, away through that little hole below the... Uh, tool there and um, I've put the hour wheel on and uh, not to forget the dial washer stuck that on so we're going to stick the dial on now and then we're going to put the hands on and uh, pop it in its case and we're pretty much done apart from some regulation okay so the dial is on uh, the screws on this particular calibre make it a little bit fiddly but we did it in about two or three minutes I guess. Um, now we've got this uh, little tool here which you just use to line up the hands and uh, then press them on uh, nice and neatly and as there are no calendar works then uh, we don't have to wind forward the uh, movement manually and get it to click over at midnight and then put the hands on uh, to indicate that it is midnight. Um, in this instance, we can just chuck them on. We don't have to worry about where the um, particular movement is in terms of calendar, because there is no calendar, uh, so that's good. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm not gonna film that process. I'm actually gonna do that, and I'm gonna pop this movement back in its case, and uh, then we've got to worry about putting the new glass on. Okay, so you remember that when we took the bezel and the glass off, if you watched the first video, and I recommend that you do that, that it was pretty difficult to get off and there was no obvious place to prise off the bezel uh, as there is with the King Seiko and many of the other Seiko um, bezels like this. Now that's because the bezel and glass was actually cemented on. So to perfect a full restoration of this watch, we have to re-cement it all on. So there is the new glass with the bezel on. So the bezel has been put on with very, very tough uh, glue. And the um, glass that you can see there, that's been put on with special UV glue. Um, so that uh, that has to cure now and that's what it's doing inside this little UV curing box that I've got here so that should fix that in very very tight uh, and then we just need to put the movement inside um, and regulate the watch and we're good so let's do that and there is the watch on the time grapher um, looking really really nice there uh, for a watch that was first made in July 1965 looking nice and shiny and elegant so let's have a look what the time graph is telling us okay you can see the watch is gaining uh, seven seconds a day there um, the little bit of stuff that you can see on the time graph there uh, is my voice that the microphone is picking up but as you can see, um, amplitude is back up nice and high. We've got the beat error down to half a millisecond. So, you know, for a movement of this quality and this age, uh, plus 14 seconds a day is not at all shabby. And it's a good, strong beat there. And you can see the amplitude rising, even as I speak, to 261, which, you know, for a Seiko um, of this age, uh, is is really really good so um, quite happy with that anyway um, there's the watch again let's have a little look at the watch I'm going to show it to you in a minute with its new strap um, but if you like my videos then please subscribe also if you enjoyed this video give it a like I'm making a lot of videos for the channel at the moment and um, looking to put a lot of information and entertainment on mechanical wristwatches in your direction. Uh, so thanks very much. Let's have a look at this watch now on its nice new gray leather strap. 
And just look at that on its nice new gray leather strap. You know, when I started the first video, the acrylic there was so scratched. I said, you know, I said the watch looked like a beautiful woman in the shower. Um, but now, oh, there she is in all her lovely, elegant glory. And that is the, you know, the real thing about this work that I do to bring back a beautiful watch like this from a neglected state to a state which kind of says, hey, look, I'm a 1960s Seiko. I got that whole kind of madman thing going on. I've got that whole elegant, almost grand Seiko thing happening here. So yeah, really, really pleased with this job and really enjoyed doing it. So guys, you know, if you like my channel, then as I say, please subscribe. Please give this video a thumbs up. But from the watch bench here in the United Kingdom in Pembroke Dock, that's all that I've got for you tonight. So good night.